Hi, I'm Bon Anjali Palamike, CPA, and welcome to my channel. Hi class, so today, i-discuss natin yung accounting for joint venture. So sabi natin, di ba, may dalawang classification yung joint arrangement, pwedeng joint ops or joint venture. So share screen ko na yung joint arrangement natin na uh, discussion for the joint venture. So technically, joint ventures is under past and paid. So familiar na tayo dito with accounting for joint ventures. Siguro hindi lang natin alam, pero... Um, Kumbaga parang, ito rin kasi, it uses equity method wherein ito yung ginagamit natin sa business combination. So, um, currently, uh, may idea na kayo about equity method. Ito rin yung ginagamit natin sa investor associate. ba diba? Investment in associate, equity method din. So, technically, ang mga joint ventures, syempre, dahil joint arrangement siya, dapat meron pa rin joint control. And sa kanila, is net assets yung kinokontrol nila unlike kay joint operations na right to the assets and liabilities siya is net assets. So, para daw siyang shareholder lang din. So, parang equity method nga yung gagamitin natin. Okay. So, accounting for joint venture uh, specifically said na the control should be joint pero hindi ibig sabihin na equal yung profit sharing nila. Depende na rin yun sa kanilang agreement. Okay, so meron tayong three investor-investor relationship which are based on different level of control. So ito, ito yung business combination. Meron tayong dominant control pag tayo yung parent. Kapag investor naman, significant influence. Ito yung mga 20% or more. Pero kapag joint arrangement is meron kang dapat joint control. So yun yung three levels ng relationship na uh, kung may kita mo parang interrelated sila and also lahat sila gumagamit ng equity method. Okay. So, ano yung mga exempted na gumamit ng equity method? So, meron tayong tinitawag ng mga exemptions. So, first is kapag venture capital organization ka, hindi mo kailangan gumamit ng equity method. So, may sample tayo dito. Ha? So, si A, may hawak siya na 15%, 15% ownership kay C. Then, si B, which is subsidiary ni A, meron din siyang 20% ownership kay C. Then itong si B, yung subsidiary ni A, is a venture capital organization. So in this case, for the A company, it may elect to measure the 20%. So dahil hawak niya si B, technically hawak niya na rin yung ownership ni B, di ba? So yung 20%, pwede per value through profit or loss. Pero yung 15% na hawak niya, which is hindi naman siya isang venture capital organization, should be treated as equity method. Okay. So, minsan, nagkakaroon ng transactions between the joint venture and the joint venturer. So, kung mapapansin nyo, very similar with the chapter 4, 4 and 5 of business combination, we in nagkakaroon ng upstream and downstream transactions. So, may kita nyo, minsan si joint venture nagbibenta sa um, joint venturer. Si joint venturer nagbibenta sa joint venture. So, downstream, kapag ang joint venture bumibili kay joint Ah, sorry. When a joint venture, so yung venture, yung tao, bumibili siya kay joint venture. So technically, si joint venture nasa taas, pababa, binibenta niya kay tao, kay venture. Then baliktad naman kay upstream. Upstream naman is kapag si joint venture nagbebenta kay joint venture. Okay. So technically, uh, mag apply din yung business combination rule natin. Wherein yung joint venture should not recognize its share of the profit until it resells sa outside party. So dahil nga, di ba, parang may concept kayo na iisa lang din or nasa isang joint venture kayo, pag nagbebenta ang isa sarili nyo, hindi pa yun tinitreat as profit unless mabenta nyo na in the outside party. Pero sa downstream transactions, kapag loss yung kinahinat na na nung transaction, it should be recognized immediately. So under conservatism, it should be immediately recognize if they represent a reduction. Pagating naman kay upstream, only the gain attributable to the interest of the other joint venture should be recognized. And the full amount of any loss should be recognized when the transaction shows evidence that the NRV of current asset is less than the cost or kung merong impairment loss. Okay. So, tulad din sa business combi, kailangan nating eliminate yung intercompany profits or gain and losses. So, 
profits and losses resulting from downstream and upstream transaction between the joint venture here and the uh, joint venture, including the consolidated subsidiaries, are eliminated to the extent. So, ito ha, uh, yung elimination nila to the extent of your own interest. Kung baga parang, kasi kunyari, uh, ito ka, ito si venture, ito yung joint venture. Itong joint venture is composed of tatlo kayo, kunyari, nagbenta ka dito. So, kapag nagbenta ka dito, para ka na rin nagbenta sa sarili mo kapag ganun. So, dapat, i-eliminate mo yung portion ng sarili mo. So, eliminate to the extent of the joint venture's interest in joint venture. So, ito diba, sabi, very similar dun sa eliminating ng intra-group transaction between a parent and a subsidiary. So, in equity accounting, it is assumed that the profit or loss of an investor joint venture transaction is realized in proportion to the third party's ownership interest in the associate or joint ventures. So, yung pag eliminate natin, kumbaga yung concept nun is, uh, yung na-discuss ko kanina, hindi ka pwedeng nagtatansak with yourself. Kasi nga, pag nagbenta ka sa joint venture, which is part ka nun, para ka na rin nagbenta sa sarili mo. Kaya natin imi-eliminate. Okay. So, pagdating naman sa joint venture losses. So, uh, dahil nga para kang shareholder, Kapag yung losses niya nag-exceed na dun sa ano mo, initial investment mo, you shall discontinue. Hindi ka na makikisali. Unlike kay joint operations, di ba? Kasi parang sharing talaga sila ng lahat ng kautangan at asset. This time around, kay joint venture, kapag lugi na yung joint venture and nag-exceed na siya dun sa initial investment mo na kaya mong ibigay, so you will discontinue the share of losses. Para kang shareholder. Okay, so should the joint venture, so paano naman kung kumikita na ulit yung joint venture? Pwede ka lang mag-recognize kapag nabawi mo na yung mga hindi mo um, inabsorb na losses before. So after they equal the share of losses not recognized. So kapag meron namang impairment ng assets and it provides evidence na may impair impairment ka, the losses shall be recognized in full by the joint venture. Okay, so that's all for the theory. So let's now go with the um, Excel file para makapag-discuss tayo ng examples. Okay, so illustration 9-8. So ito is joint venture is not a parent and does not prepare conso financial statement. So under equity method din daw. Okay. So may dalawang real estate companies daw. Gumawa sila ng separate vehicle kasi diba usually ang joint venture is structured under separate vehicle. So yung isa, si Sun. Nagbaya daw siya ng 1680, 1680 for a 30% interest. Sa Anton, Anton Corporation is yung kanilang joint venture. And the outstanding uh, such acquisition gave uh, Sun. So may joint control daw. Nung nagbigay daw siya nito, may joint control. ba diba sabi natin, hindi natin tinitignan yung percent. Ay, 30% lang po. Baka wala siyang control. ba diba nag a tayo? Depending kung yung dalawang tao ba, is kaya ba nilang makontrol using their um, percentages. So, baka naman kasi they only need 50% to agree, di ba? Tapos 30, tapos 20. Isa, mga ganun. May mga initial example tayo about that. So, don't be confused na, ay, 30% lang po, wala po siyang joint control. So, eh, hindi yun yung basis natin, di ba? Basis natin is kung yung transaction is mag-go with their joint agreement and unanimous consent. Okay. So, yung fair value ng net asset, so parang hawig na hawig kay business com, so, fair value ng net assets niya is 1,380,000. So, kinuha natin yung fair value. Tapos, kinumpit natin yung goodwill. So, ang goodwill daw is 300,000. Okay. Tapos, meron may mga difference ng book value and fair value. So, same with uh, business combi, di ba? Kinukuha natin yung over and under valuation since it will be amortized over the uh, useful life. Okay. So, pinagkaiba lang which is, hindi, medyo similar din. May percent, kumbaga, yung percent of that lang, yung share mo, hindi naman itong buo. So, 30%, so ito yung share mo ng amortization. Okay, so during the year, nagkaroon na ng net income of 1,200,000 and nagbayad ng dividend na 600,000. Okay. So, ngayon, paano yung magiging entry under joint venture? So, technically, sundin mo lang. Equity method. Ano bang ginagawa pag equity method? ba pag equity method is lahat ng movement sa RE, pinapasok mo agad. Unlike a cost model na yung dividend share lang ang ginagawa mo. So under equity method, kapag nagkaroon ng net income, it is additional to your investment, additional in your income. 
kapag nagkaroon ng dividends, pabawas ng investment mo kasi as if nabawasan ka din kasi equity method yung gamit mo. Yung share ng mga ganitong mga amortization, nagkakaroon ka rin ng share dyan, di ba? Share sa net income. Okay. So first is the recording of the investment in joint venture. So nag-invest siya ng 1,680,000 for 30% interest in the joint venture. 1,680. Next, nakareceive ka ng dividends from Anton Company. So nung nakareceive ka, 180,000, sabi natin, under equity method, nababawasan ang investment account once we receive dividends. So credit to investment in joint venture. Next, Nagkaroon ng net income amounting to 1,200,000. So, 30% only. So, 30%, which is 1,200,000 times 30%, equals 360,000. So, magkakaroon ako ng share in net income. So, we debit investment in joint venture and credit investment income. Number four, merong amortization, which is ito, yung 39,000 na nakumpit natin. So, paano po natin nakumpit yan? So, we got we get yung over-under valuation, fair value, less book value. Ilang years ba i-amortize to? So, divide natin. So, ito, 500 divided by 10. Then, 30% of that is yung share ni joint venture. So, yung total niyan, which is 39,000, is debit to investment income. So, pabawas siya sa investment income mo. And credit to investment in joint venture for 39,000. So, technically, ganun lang. Equity method lang yung gagawin mo. Next, illustration 9-9. So, ito naman, uh, joint venture is a parent or investor and is a parent. Kung baga kasi dito, may binigay na isang example. Paano daw pag hindi siya parent? So, hindi siya nagpre-prepare ng Conso FS. So, pag hindi ka nagpre-prepare ng Conso FS, ginagawa mo agad yung equity method. Kasi di ba, under business combi, kapag nagpre-prepare ka ng Conso FS, may option ka to cost model muna, tapos sa Conso worksheet na lang, ina-apply yung equity method. So, eto, kung cost model ka muna kunyari as a joint, joint venture, rare, joint venture, yung tao. So, may record ka muna under cost model. So, under cost model, dalawa lang na yung record mo. Yung initial investment mo as a your addition in your investment in joint venture, And next is yung share mo sa dividend income, which is not treated as deduction in investment in joint venture. Instead, ang recording mo is dividend income. So, uh, same na same, familiar sa business combi. If, uh, umaga, kung mapapansin nyo, ito rin yun eh, cost model niya ganito, diba? bawas sa uh, I mean, additional dividend income. Tapos, na itong magkakonso na, kasi itong illustration na to, gumagawa siya ng Conso FS. So, pwedeng sa equity, yung equity model, ma-apply niya na lang during the consolidation. So, gagawa siya ng worksheet, di ba? Conso worksheet. So, under the Conso worksheet, dun niya na ilalaptag lahat ng mga pinagagawa dito. Yun ang naman yung sinasabi nito, neto. Na parang pwedeng sa Conso worksheet mo na i-apply lahat ng adjustments. Adjustments sa share in net income, amortization, and yung dividend. Yung dividend, kung may kita mo, kinlose niya yung dividend income sa joint venture kasi yun yung entry under equity method. So, um, kumbaga parang, ayan, eliminate yung dividend income. Parang binibring mo lang sa equity method yung cost model niya in the console worksheet. So, take note, ang console worksheet is not a recording in the books of the joint venture or neither recording in the books of the joint venture. Isa lang siyang parang um, temporary adjustments para lang ma-consolidate yung figures nila. Ayan. So, let's try another example dito para medyo mas maliwanagan tayo with the joint venture. So, number 54. So, si Goldman, may net income siya na 140,000 each year. So, sulat natin, 140,000. Nagbayad siya ng dividend na 50,000 annual din na cash dividend. The company holds net assets of 1,200,000 as of January 1, 2018 or 20x3, on that date, si Wallis bumili siya ng 40% for 600,000. So that is the consideration which give her the ability to join control. So si Z. Merman, isa siya dun sa joint venture din. So kasama niya. So si Goldman, siya yung joint venture. Okay. At the purchase date, the excess of cost 
over its share was assigned to goodwill. So, magkano yung goodwill? Kukumpitin mo, di ba? Given na yung consideration and ang fair value ng net asset is 1,200,000. So, parang partial goodwill approach. Kailangan mong kuha yung 40% para makuha na ang goodwill is 120,000. So, ang tanong nyo ngayon, magkano yung investment in goldman balance under equity method under the financial records ni Wallace. So, ano ba yung magpapagalaw sa investment account? So, first, ang magpapagalaw dyan is the initial investment. Next, under equity method, share in net income. So, 140,000 share in net income, pero 40% lang nun. Times 3, kasi 3 times, kasi 2013 nagsimula yung investment. And yearly, annual daw na net income is 140,000. So, times 3, 168,000. Next, sa dividends ng 50,000, 30% ay 40% of that is share mo. Tapos 3 years and deduction siya kasi under equity method, dividend income is deduction in your investment account. So we'll have a total balance by 20x5 ng investment in Goldman of 708,000 letter D. Next, assume that Goldman ownership structure is as follows. So ito ang pag-aassessin tayo ng joint control. So, kailangan daw 75% para makapag-direct ng activities. 50% pag mamayari ni Wallis. 30% pag mamayari ni Zimmerman. And 20 kay American. So, may joint control ba? So, technically, kung makikita mo, 50 plus 20 kapag si Wallis and American, hindi magagawa. Pero 50 plus 30 magagawa pag Wallis and Zimmerman. So, may joint control sila. So, ibig sabihin, pwede nating assume na isa tong joint arrangement nilang dalawa with joint control. What is the amount of income? Magkano yung magiging income sa financial records? So dahil may joint control, ang magiging income nila is 50-50 daw dito. So sabi, based on the ownership, si Wallace can block any decision. So hindi naman niya kinokontrol buo. Kailangan niya si Zimmerman to agree. So meron silang joint control. Because they are only combination of parties, it is clear that they must unanimously agree. So, yung net income nila ngayon is 50-50. So, 70,000 letter C. So, paano naman kung ganito yung situation? So, 75% ang kailangan. 50 yung kanya, 25-25. May kita mo na may multiple combination na pwede magawa. So, dahil doon, wala itong joint control. So, kung walang joint control, ang mangyari... Um, associate lang. Pero still, ang magkakaroon ka pa rin na share in net income, which is 70,000 pa rin yung answer. 57. Wala rin joint control kasi sabi dapat majority, majority will vote. Eh yung mga proportion nila, uh, hindi mo marami ka multiple combinations na magagawa. So, ang income from investment will be 35%. So, 140,000 net income times 35%, which is yung share mo sa, tawag dito, share ni, siya ang tinatawag si Wallace, 35%. So, dahil hindi ito joint venture. So, ito rin 56, yung 50% nang galing dito sa ownership mo. Next problem. Doc Company acquired at 30%. So, may 30% si Doc Company for 2 million yung bilhin niya. Assume the cost of investments equal the fair value of net asset and DOC assigned the 500,000. So, yung difference daw is coming from this. 100, 200, and 200. During the year, merong net income na 800 and dividends na 200,000. So, ang tanong, magkano ang income ni DOC from the Oak Joint Venture? So, first is meron siyang share in income. Then sa 800,000, 30% of that will be share. Next is the reduction. Kasi di ba, dahil um, part ka din nito, makikishare ka dun sa uh, amortization, which is 150,000. So, ito kinuha to divided by ng useful life. So, net income share is 90,000. Number two, magkano yung investment account? So, investment account, we start with the initial investment of 2 million plus the net income share less the dividend income share, which is reduction of investment. So, we'll come up with 2 million 30 letter C. Okay, so that's all for today. So thank you so much and hope na natutunan natin ang accounting for joint ventures. Thank you.